Good morning and welcome back. It's now 840. Several U.S. service members were injured during last week's missile attack on an airbase in Iraq. An official says 11 American soldiers were treated for concussions and some are still being assessed. The Iranians launched 16 missiles at two bases in retaliation for the U.S. airstrikes that killed an Iranian commander. Here to tell us more about concussions is the chief neurosurgeon of Memorial Hospital, Dr. Stephen Sabelli. Thank you so much for coming in and talking with us this Saturday morning. You know, this was something that we were talking about in the newsroom yesterday. Initially, we were reporting per U.S. troops, including the president, there were no injuries equated to this attack, associated with this attack. Turns out a week later, two weeks later, we're learning of several U.S. Uh, troops being injured with concussions. Could it be, is this, is this associated with concussions? No initial symptoms on the onset? Well, first, thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's reasonable for them to have not known this initially. So a concussion is a alteration in your mental status after a traumatic injury or a force applied to your head. And it can be right away or it can be hours to days later. So their initial assessments was probably everybody's safe, nobody's you know, lost limbs, had cuts, burns, whatever from the blast, and now they're seeing the blast effect. So these, these explosions that are at distance from the, the armed forces, but the shock wave is still transmitting through the structures and into the patient hitting their brain. You know, this type of injury has often been called the signature injury of the Iraq and Afghani wars. We've, over the last 13, 14 years, we've had the U.S. Army Armed Forces have reported over 300,000 brain injuries, the bulk wow. of those being concussions. You know, people have had um, an altered mental status from this kind of force applied to them. Within weeks, talking about this specific airstrike, we've gone from zero patients to now 11. Do you suspect from afar where you're standing, this number will increase when talking about this attack? Well, it certainly could. And the other factor here is because a concussion can cause alterations in behavior, anxiety, stress, depression, irritability, some of the things that might be labeled as PTSD may be concussion syndromes. Some of, there's overlap between the two. So some of these things may manifest a little further down the line or at least be diagnosed that, oh, well, really you resulted in this injury from the blast effect. You defined what a concussion is. Let's talk about symptoms for folks here at home. Sure. So here at home, I mean, we unfortunately will have some of the patients who will have been injured in, in the conflicts overseas because we're a military town. But the bulk of the injuries that we'll see like this in town will be sports related. Sports, right. So there's you know, 300,000 type of concussions like this from sports in the United States a year. Uh, you might see a, a patient may be amnestic to the event. They may not know what happened to them in that moment. They may have alterations in their speech. They may have dexterity issues, coordination mm -hmm. issues. Uh, they could be more irritable. They could have difficulty sleeping, headache, nausea, vomiting. So certainly if you've had a traumatic injury, a car accident, a, impact on the sports field, something along those lines, and you or your loved one or your friend is acting differently, doesn't recall everything, you want to get them to a medical specialist to be evaluated. And at what point should that come into play? At what point should you say, hey, we're going to the doctor? As we're soon as you there. realize that type of change is taking place, you want to get somebody involved, whether it's EMTs or a, uh, a sports team physician at the field, or go to the local ER or your primary care doctor if the patient seems stable. Because it's not just the concussion, it's that there could be other injuries that could be going on that you're unaware of that could be more life-threatening. The other thing to consider is sometimes because these are just transient events, people will say, oh, well, I, someone, John got better, we'll let it go. But you're at a higher risk of that second concussion yeah. in short order. And that second concussion, what, a force that may not have caused much damage to you before, as a second hit can cause much more severe permanent damage to you. And being an athlete, I recall back in those days, my, our parents telling us never to go to sleep. They would always, you know, they would always check the, our, the dilation in our eyes. Is yes. that still So in accurate? those situations, yeah, if you think somebody had a significant concussion, you may be doing what are called one-hour checks right. to see if the patient's alert, conscious. That's not necessarily that you're just looking for a concussion, but you're looking for a more severe brain injury that would have to potentially require someone like me to operate. Dr. Sabelli, for more information on concussions, where can people go? Uh, you can go to Memorial um, Hospital's at site on uh, the web, and you can also go to Memorial Neurospine, uh, our practice, and we're always happy to happy. The CDC always has a good page as well. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us this Saturday Absolutely. morning. Thank, Thank you so you. much for having me.